Hey, welcome to Walk in Wisdom. We're talking about the kingdom of God. If you remember, we're kind of focusing on, you know, this book, That's the Kingdom. It's available from booksbyvision.org, Vision Publishing. And uh, hey, just remember, like us, love us, send us cards and flowers, send us cash, we'll take it. Uh, but we'd love to hear from you and let, let us know what you think about the program. And we, we just want to see this be a blessing to many. Hey, this is the third uh, installment, if you will, on That's the Kingdom. And they're really messages that you know, present you know, some key principles, I think, of kingdom life, kingdom living. We did a little introduction, and uh, that was just kind of an overview of things. Last week, we talked about agreement, and we're going to kind of continue to talk a little bit about the the power of agreement and its importance in living in the kingdom. You know, part of the, you know, the impetus of speaking on this now is I think our country might be a little bit divided. I know that comes as a bit of a shock to you. And even, of course, in the church, we're highly divided. I mean, what Jesus started out wanting was a church that was clearly united. Unity was extremely important to Jesus and his disciples. We see that especially talked about in John chapter 17. Father, I would that they be one. Well, you know, we're often not very one as a church, as a culture, within our political uh, ideology, etc. We got a lot of division. And it's one of the reasons why I think, especially for the church, we often lack power or influence in the culture in which we find ourselves because we're not as united together as what we need to be in order to fulfill the purpose that God has. So I want to just talk a little bit about some of this. I mean, we, to find a place of unity by faith, we need to, you know, I mean, you know, have some essentials that we certainly all believe in because we want to see the power of God really released. I mean, I think we all want that. We are already in God's triumph. We're already victorious in Christ. We are, I think most of us, thoroughly convinced that the kingdom of God is an ever-expanding kingdom because Jesus Christ is Lord. And so we know in the big picture, in the sovereignty of God, everything's going to work out. But uh, he wants to participate with us, and he wants us to participate with him to see the fulfillment of his kingdom purposes. So there's, of course, there's lots of causes for disunity, and I just cover a few, I mean, and list some scriptures and talk about it a little bit. One is, you know, hatred's a big one. Proverbs 10, 12 talks about that. I mean, you know, and sadly today, uh, if you go on social media, uh, if you watch any of the news programs, no matter which of the alphabet uh, you're looking from, I mean, talk about vitriol. I mean, spite and hatred and malice being just frothed all over the place uh, in our media and our culture. It's no wonder that there's such disunity of purpose and intent. I mean, many of us have been reflecting of late of, you know, when 9-11 hit, what a horrible day, but what an incredible response Churches went from, you know, being whatever they were to, I mean, not, a, not an empty seat in a house anywhere. I mean, people were coming to church, coming together, you know, uh, professing their faith in God. I mean, because we were scared and we didn't know what was going to happen. But as soon as we realized, okay, the attack is truly over, well, we went back to business as usual. You know, with COVID, I mean, sadly, because of a number of reasons which we don't need to go into, churches were decimated. Many were closed uh, because of a lack of uh, ability, I guess, to adjust to the new normal of COVID and the pandemic. And we saw that, uh, you know, I mean, it was kind of crazy. You could meet together in a stadium, but you couldn't meet together in church. And so much of the church responded to that the best they could, but 
you know, many churches either closed or shrunk, and people who got used to, you know, worshiping the Lord in their underwear and in their, in their living room just didn't like the idea of having to get dressed on Sunday morning and come back to an actual ecclesia, an actual gathering of God's citizens in a community to worship God and to declare his truth. Anyway, crazy times, hatred. Sometimes 1 Timothy 6.4 talks about foolishness can cause division. I mean, just people that are frivolous and foolish about what they say and what they do. Anger, which kind of goes along with hatred, Proverbs 29.22, a contentious spirit. You know, there's some folks that just like to fight, Proverbs 26.21, and, and of course pride, which comes before a fall. But pride, thinking essentially that you're right about everything, when none of us are right about everything except for God. Pride can enter in and cause disunity, Proverbs 28, 25. Well, you know, what's the importance of unity? Well, you know, Amos 3, 3, can two walk the same road unless they be in agreement? Well, we can walk, but we're not going to walk very well. We're not going to get along very well. We're not going to like each other at the end of the road unless we can do so with agreement. Exodus 17, 11, and 12, you know, as Moses' hands were held up, you know, by Aaron and her, I mean, they, they were able to, uh, you know, defeat the enemy. And, you know, that's a picture, if you will, a type or shadow of the unity necessary. We need to be lifting up each other's hands, especially those that labor and serve as leaders in the body of Christ. Nehemiah 4 talks about the rebuilding of the wall and as they came together with a willingness to work. I mean, nowadays we have a willingness to take a free paycheck. We have a willingness to be taken care of by others. But really, I mean, if a man does not work, not necessarily make money, but if man does not work, don't feed them, neither shall they eat. It should still be a part of how we see things, I believe, since it's actually something that we find in the Word. If we're going to really rebuild as God intends, we have to figure out some way of coming together because the kingdom is not about individuals. We have a king, that's Jesus, we're not kings. We're a kingdom of priests. We're here to serve and serve each other. <clears throat> so whether you're a five-fold ministry gift or whatever giftings you have, God's intention is for us to work together to fulfill His ultimate purpose. And, you know, there's so many other pictures of healthy unity like, you know, Joshua, Jericho, and David's ragtag band coming together, Gideon's 300, and on and on we go. But really there's, I've got here one, two, three, four, five areas, I guess, of life, if you will, that are where unity is really, really needed. Number one, of course, is with God. I mean, we need to be more and more like Jesus, whose greatest claim to fame and from his viewpoint was the fact that he and his father were one, that they were in a, a unified relationship of mutual love and respect together. I mean, his desire in John 17, 21, we mentioned earlier, was for his disciples to be just like that. Not to bicker amongst each other all the time. Not that you can't have good debate. I love good debate. But at the end of the day, we're on the same page together because we're, we're pursuing fulfilling the will of God in our time and season. And uh, Jesus was totally submitted to the Father, to his will. I, I mean, that's why when we come together, in, especially in worship, we're, we're joining all of heaven, and heaven is joining us. We have one focus, that the name of Jesus be lifted up, that the Father would be glorified, that the Holy Spirit be praised, and that the church of Jesus Christ would again, grow and fulfill its purpose. We need to be in unity in terms of the church and life in the church because we're all a part of the same body and we need to learn to work together. It's, we need to learn to respect each type of gift, each individual, treat each other with love and respect because, you know, that's the way of our Father. In leadership, we need to, you know, show proper respect and honor to those that are in leadership, especially those that labor in the Word. I mean, really, it's a coming into agreement 
with our leadership. So obviously in the family, we need to have unity. Marriages are being torn apart. Families are being torn apart. We're losing so many of our young people from the life of the church for the world. But we need to be, again, focused on learning to love each other, help each other, support each other in unity. But I think it all starts by having a vision for that. I mean, I think it's very easy when you watch television, social media, or just hang out with friends for the vision of what God has already declared will be from actually coming to pass. We can't see it. We can't see it. We can't see the kingdom of God expanding. We can't see the church triumphant. We can't see it. And because we can't see it, we can't really work toward it. So we have to be able to allow our vision to be brought into proper perspective, focus, unity. Really, we have one message. It's the, it's the kingdom of God. It's the great commission motivated by the great commandment. That's what we're all about together. But we need to be able to see. Can you see the end result? Can you see the reality that the earth shall be covered with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea? Can you see every enemy of God becoming his footstool? And you and I ruling and reigning with him. What sacrifice must we make to see that happen? Whatever it is, it's worth it. I mean, that's really a a kingdom mindset, if you will. It's an apostolic, prophetic mindset. It's the foundation on which we build. It's the kingdom of God. So I'm convinced with all my heart, God wants us to to live in unity. And whatever is in our hearts or our minds that keep us from being unified, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to deal with that in our lives. Anyway, these are just kingdom principles, and some of them I talk about more extensively in my book. That's the kingdom of God, but, you know, most of this is kind of extra book. And and so next time, we're going to talk about generational kingdom life. From generation to generation, God's intention is to see his kingdom purposes fulfilled, like leaven in a lump. It starts in a small way, but it continues to grow until it permeates every area of life. That's what God's doing. We'll talk about that more in our next session. Again, thanks for being a part and spending time with me on on Walk in Wisdom, formerly called Wednesdays in the Word. God bless you. Until next time.